and time. Coffee wasn't made for growing in Africa. Africa was made for growing coffee. Did you get that? Let me repeat it one more time. Coffee wasn't made for growing in Africa. Rather, Africa was made for growing coffee. Now, the African continent often is associated with, with negative things, such as corruption, such as poverty, such as war. But I believe that this is slowly changing, and coffee is at the forefront of this new narrative. We could even call coffee the protagonist in this new African story. And Geisha Village, a coffee farm that's found in the forests of Benchmaji in Ethiopia, is the perfect example of a coffee farm that's driving forward this new African narrative. Let me push this across for you. Now, Geisha Village isn't a new farm. It's been around for many years. Most people know the farm as a place where indigenous geisha varietals were found, replanted, and cultivated. It's also been confirmed as the birthplace of the infamous Panama geisha, which has taken both the world and this very competition stage by storm. But there's a much deeper meaning and a richer narrative to Geisha Village. And in order to understand this, we need to know our first character in our African story. So if you can please turn the pages in your storybooks. Here we find Omer. Omer is the spiritual leader, unfortunately the late spiritual leader, of the Minut people. The local inhabitants and caretakers on the land on which Geisha village was found. So coffee wasn't planted here. Coffee lived here. Geisha lived here. And Omer held the key to unlocking this with the rest of the world. Now before Omer officially handed the land over to Adam and Rachel, the owners of Geisha Village, he made a bold request. He said, take care of my land, take care of my people, and educate my people. So Adam and Rachel done a lot more than just start the coffee farm. They started a village, a village that has made it possible for us to enjoy two amazing coffees today. The first coffee is a Geisha 1931 varietal. This varietal, compared to other varieties, has a thin layer of mucilage between skin and seed, which gives us amazing florality and a complex acidity in our coffees today. Geisha Village also provides ideal growing conditions for producing high-quality specialty coffee, such as a high altitude, which in this case is 1,900 to 2,060 meters above sea level, shade growing for the coffee plants through a natural growing forest canopy, and a biodiversity in bench margi, which is extremely unique and cannot be replicated anywhere else in the world. Now, when I visited the farm in April last year, the farm manager, Carlo, said to me, although growing conditions might change from year to year, at the end of the day, we work with God's hand. So this 1931 varietal and the processing is what I believe makes this coffee extremely special. The process Adam refers to as natural cold aerobic. The coffee cherries are placed in a concrete tank and fermented for 60 hours at 15 degrees Celsius. Now this is a low temperature for coffee fermentation. But because of that thin layer of mucilage, we find a really refined acidity, amazing florals, and a delicate acidity. What I love most about this coffee is that we don't taste an isolated part of the C2Cup process, such as fermentation or experimentation. Rather, we get a clear image of the varietal the growing conditions, the process, and the human craftsmanship from Adam and the Kalu. So if you could please write down your flavor notes for your espresso. Up front, you'll experience amazing orange blossom aroma. And this reminds me of my first experience on the farm. 
where as I got out to the Landover, I was met with this hypnotizing aroma of flowering coffee trees. Next, you'll experience a low to medium weight, a texture that is both silky and smooth, Your flavors will be clementine, raspberry, excuse me, cranberry, mango, and the finish will be long and pleasantly dry, like grapefruit. Now, if you please turn over the pages in your storybooks, you'll find these flavor notes, but you'll also find what I like to call a flavor guide. And this is essentially colors that will guide you to the notes that I just provided. Now, we have a slightly different drinking protocol today. Feel free to assess your crema. But I'm also using, using an infrared thermometer that's going to read the temperature of our espresso today. What I'd like you to do is to please stir until you get a stable temperature of 50 degrees Celsius. Now, the numbers might jump up and down just a little, but don't stress, it's all part of the process. Just keep on stirring until you hit a stable 50 degrees, and then you're more than welcome to enjoy. I've used 20 grams of coffee to extract 45 mils of espresso. I'd like you to please take three sips to enjoy the full experience of this true African geisha. Enjoy. Okay, we're all done tasting. Okay, friends, if you can please turn over to the next pages in our storybook. Here we find Adam and Rachel Overton, the founders and owners of Geisha Village, and the second pivotal set of characters in setting out our new African narrative. Now, Adam and Rachel have done an amazing job at working with an existing ecosystem in Bench Margi and driving it forward to what I believe is a coffee haven. One of the things I love most about this farm is that they don't only grow geisha. The second coffee that I'm using for your course is called Ilubabo Forest 1974, and it's an alum disease-resistant Ethiopian varietal. Let's turn over to the next pages for flavor notes and some formalities. You can turn over to the next page. Thank you very much. So for your milk course, you can write down. 
will experience raisin, melted ice cream, and milk chocolate. And this reminds me of rum and raisin ice cream. So the Silubobo 1974 varietal, unlike the 1931 geisha, has a thick layer enjoy, of mucilage between skin and seed. Adam refers to this process of this coffee as natural semi-anaerobic. Here, the whole cherries are placed in a, stain, in a plastic bag. Excuse me. It's sealed and covered with a plastic top and then fermented for 110 hours. This extended fermentation, there we go, that's for you, enjoy. Combined with that thicker layer of mucilage gives us dense and concentrated flavors that when combined with this freeze distilled milk gives us amazing sweetness. And what I believe is the best milk tasting beverage I've ever tasted. Just a reminder of those flavor notes, you'll experience raisin, vanilla ice cream, that's for you, milk chocolate, and this reminds me of ramen raisin ice cream. Beautiful. Here we go. That's for you, my friend. Enjoy. Thank you. Okay, friends, if you can turn over to the next pages in your booklet. Here we find our third character, and as you can see, that is actually me. When I visited Geisha Village, unfortunately, two weeks before my visit, our beloved Oma had passed away. Adam took the farm visit as a chance to attend his memorial, and I was fortunate to join him. When we arrived at Oma's compound, we were announced to the tribe by gunfire. As we entered the compound, we were met with his wives, his children, his grandchildren, family and friends mourning his passing, but also celebrating his life. And today, for me to experience that and get to serve you this coffee makes this moment so much more special. So for my signature beverage, we have two espressos that have been cooling down, one of the 1931 and one of the Lubobo. To this, I'm starting off by adding 20 mils of clarified milk. When we add citric acid to milk, it splits into curds and whey. I'm using the whey or the clarified milk to provide texture in our signature beef today. Next, I have 42 mils of a citra hops solution. One part of citra hops to 100 parts of water. This is going to give us amazing vibrancy and a passion fruit note in our sig beef. I then have six mils of a tartaric acid, one part tartaric acid to two parts, to 60 parts, excuse me, of water. This is giving us an Earl Grey or Lady Grey note in our espresso, in our Sigbev. Lastly, I have 25 mils of honey. This is adding sweetness and balance, but this isn't just any honey. This honey is from Geisha Village. The very bees that pollinate the coffee flowers to make this coffee possible to drink also produced this honey. I'm going to be blending this up just to give us some texture and to homogenize. So if you could please turn over the page to our final page, I'll give you our flavor notes. You'll experience, first up, a coffee flower aroma. You'll experience a note of passion fruit. Lady Grey tea. And the finish will be long and pleasantly dry like a white wine. Your drinking instructions are to please swirl 10 times, take in the aroma, and enjoy. 
But before you enjoy, please allow me to conclude. As Africans, we don't often get the opportunity to control our own narrative. And today, from Omer's hands to Adam and Rachel, from mine to yours, it's a pleasure for me to do that and to serve you this coffee. Thank you. Time. <laughs>